Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel, uh, Making It in Austria. Good morning from Vienna. It's a cloudy day, but we hope we will have some um, sunshine in the afternoon and some warm weather. Uh, today, I have a very, very great uh, friend here, Oslem Önnen. Some of you know her, uh, some of you have heard about her, especially about her work at Common Room and Common Cafe, which is one of the second homes we have with Making It in Austria. Oslem, <laughs> welcome. Thank you very much, Adela. Thank you <laughs> for your nice words, actually. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being our host uh, over the last uh, years. Uh, we have all of us have fond memories and, and we are looking forward to coming back over and over to Common Cafe and Common Room. Uh, you created a special you know, atmosphere over there. I feel really when you come in, you feel like like home, you know, and all this this great food that uh, that you do and your sisters. So it's it's great. This and, you know, you're immediately uh, relaxed. So I didn't like feel good about yourself when you come in. This is amazing <laughs> to hear really, and I we hear it very often and this makes us so happy and it is really such a hard job, but it it gives kind of a feeling that oh, it works. It's good. It's, it's <laughs> work. <laughs> yeah, it, it's work. So Aslan, this is making it in Austria channel, and I interviewed many many people that you already also know, like uh, Dilek, uh, who's doing amazing things. So tell us about your way to Austria. So what did brought you to Austria and your family? Mm -hmm. um, Actually, it was always an idea to go abroad and to, to experience different cultures, different places when I studied uh, architecture. But after we finished our studies and our master uh, studies actually in, in Turkey, that uh, me and my husband, we thought actually where should we go at that time? Actually, Barcelona was a great idea. Paris was a romantic idea to do. But then my husband got a kind of an approve from Angelante Kunst for his uh, PhD study. And then we said, OK, let's go to uh, Vienna. Uh, then we can change it because it was uh, we came Vienna before and that time we said no this is not a place to live really <laughs> you cannot be here so but we came here around 2007 okay. and then, yeah and then he studied, started his studies and then I applied to a technical university for my PhD studies and then I have started at the Technical University. And then the whole story has started like this in a more academic um, scene, actually. And uh, But then it turned out that I found a job for myself as an architect. And then I have st I have uh, started working with uh, Walter Stetsama, who is a great architect and very specialized on actually social um, re uh, residences or one bow, uh, very special for um, Austria Vienna, actually. And I have worked with him around actually 13 years. And then after pandemic, yeah, I, I worked actually full time for a long time. And then after my uh, first uh, birth to, to my daughter Vera, then I reduced that. But then after pandemic, I reduced it very much. And then this common room idea, which evolved actually 10 years ago, became very strong uh, point in my life. And now at the moment, I am more uh, actually dedicated to common room. But again, uh, it is always kind of actually putting things together in common room, pushing it a little bit there, and then going back to architecture because I love architecture a lot. I feel like that I use all my intellectual capacities and skills in architecture actually. And common room is more like a, a do it on your way, try it, challenge it kind of thing actually for me. And um, so this was the actually main story uh, to come to uh, uh, Vienna, Austria. Uh, Özlem, does your day have uh, 65 hours or? or... <laughs> this is also, I asked to myself, it's not about 64 hours, but I asked to myself, am I efficient enough really to, to uh, do use all my hours or time really uh, very productive or not? And no, Adela, actually, my days are really very limited because I have two kids and I need to take care of them as well. And I need to take them, pick them up from the kindergarten and my daughter is coming from gymnasium. I really try to uh, 
kind of manage also this balance between my work life and my family life, which is a challenge, really. And I feel myself, I sacrifice a lot from both time to time. And it is always kind of a, a struggle, really, to try to keep both sides in, in, in their own paths. Mm. I really like working. I mean, I, I, this is one of the things I think I, I am a hardworking person and I like doing things. Actually, it's not about success, but I like the, the, these challenges and see if it is possible. Then how is it possible to figure out things and use my intellectual or actually personal skills, preferences? I really like it. I enjoy it. Um, you mentioned that you two together came to Vienna. So what are the things that you have experienced back then? So did you face, you know, some challenges? How was learning the language? How was, you know, finding friends, creating your circle? So how how did you do that and approach that? I mean, it was, of course, not easy. And I time to time think and we talk with Ispen as well. If we were not here, I don't know, maybe in another uh, society or if we were actually in Turkey, for sure, we have a feeling that would be much more different because we really work hard. We like actually that, and we like actually these um, challenges for Ispan as well, my, for my husband. And I don't know if it is quite well appreciated or or not actually. You know, this this is one of the issues. But on the other hand, it gave me so nice experiences, and I actually um, maybe it will it would be. Uh, actually in Turkey or in an, another place um, like this, but I figured out my own capacity, I figured out my own um, skills, and there were many obstacles, especially for the language. Actually, uh, I learned G German here. I didn't speak German in mm -hmm. Turkey. I learned German here, and especially professionally as an architect, this is really very difficult because it's such a technical uh, field, and and also very uh, man-dominated uh, field, actually. You know? And as a woman also, it is hard. And then as an uh, Auslander, it's also very hard. And as a person who cannot speak German that much, it was really hard. And I feel that actually in my architectural professional uh, actually um, uh, life, it was kind of a big uh, obstacle for me. But I chose not to be actually kind of trapped into it. and. Every time when I try to talk, every time when I try to tell things in German, uh, when people doesn't understand and when they react to me kind of in a uh, not so polite way, for example, I chose to insist and I didn't take took them personally because, you know, th this is this is a world, this is a free world and we need to approach different um, and I'm a human and living in Vienna and I'm trying my best. So the, I deserve to be helped or supported. So this is what I always kind of keep in my mind. I'm an open person. I go for it. And then so I didn't take it as an obstacle, but I really took it as a kind of a, a OK, this is a challenge right now and I will uh, go through it. <laughs> so it was kind of I was stubborn as well. <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good. <laughs> This was one of the um, issues, of course, uh, being in Austria, uh, being away from family is an issue, definitely. But then uh, we we managed to reunion again here with my own mm -hmm. family. Actually, then I have a, a huge support from my mom, which I am really grateful. Uh, but before that, it was not so easy because I think although it looks, for example, very uh, liberal and very open, I think uh, on working moms there's a huge pressure in austria this was one of the the things actually also i challenged i learned a lot from this culture really uh, i how they uh, think about the moms or family and so on very very nice values i got from them but on the other hand actually I knew the life in turkey for example especially professional life in turkey and mm -hmm. i I know that how a mom is positioned in Turkey in the professional life. So it gave me also kind of an um, strength to uh, ask for my uh, demand for my own uh, rights, actually. So it was it was one of the uh, things. 
socially it is also not so open. That's why I think uh, we have common room because we really felt so nice and um, kind of welcomed there like a second home there. Uh, because when you come to a new place, you need it. You need the social networks and so on. And in, in PhD studies, it is different from the university studies, actually, from a mm -hmm. bachelor study. You are a little bit actually grown up and you don't get connected that much, actually, with, with other people. And I really didn't want it to just to be in my Turkish um, network. I wanted to be open and reach out many people, actually, and I enjoy it. Um, as well. So it was also a challenge uh, socially, but uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, the, 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 the Vienna is amazing. Austria is so nice as a country. The nature is so good. The regulations are, I mean, I, you see, I am kind of <laughs> full with the words. <laughs> the regulations are good, but I think they are not that much small business friendly. I mean, I am really questioning a lot if this is a real social system or if it is something else, really, because as a small business in common cafe and common room, this this is too much what we we, we are actually giving out. You know, this is this mm -hmm. is uh, and also at the beginning when we uh, thought about that we are going to do uh, this professionally after the corona my gosh it was really hard to reach out the right information about what you want to do because if you call uh Vichavskama, they say something else if you call magistrat they say something else if you call actually ma blah blah then they say something else it is really kind of a a, a really a very interesting uh, phase in my life to figure out what is exactly the right about what I will going to do. Mm -hmm. These are the, for example, when I look back, these are the main issues that were actually uh, challenges or, or um, yeah, or, um, challenges, let's say. But on the other hand, of course, the school system is so nice. You are very well supported. Uh, health system, I don't know, but it is also um, okay. Uh, the mindset of the health system is not so, uh, uh, I mean, not, not so progressive, I think. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ozan, for sharing. So I know that there are different streams on, on LinkedIn where we are that talk about, you know, inter bringing up uh, that entrepreneurial spirit of Austria up to speed. And I remember listening to one of the speakers back in the days from Austrian startups where they said they want to make entrepreneurship just like skiing, you know, everybody in Austria skis. So like starting <laughs> your own business, being, you know, like, you know, being good at it, being averse with it, like with, with the young age, you know, as you said, you know where to go, you know what to find, you know which questions to ask. So this comes with practice and should come with, with the great support. Um, uh -huh. You mentioned a few things that I would like to come back. And one of them was uh, working moms in Turkey. I don't know anything about it. Very little. I, not not at, at all. You know, the, the perception that I have is like, OK, how, how it is. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, actually, it, it, it changes a lot. If you are in a big city, kind of Ankara, Istanbul, and so on, this is you have a role that you you work and you have also uh, shared the things in the home, uh, financially and socially and so on. But you are actually uh, you you have to find a solution, like to find someone who would care with, about your child when she is or he is not able to go to school or or grandpas or, or grandmas actually are supporting you but after a certain hour this is such a normal thing for a working mom to go back to professional life like and full time do you see like, do you mean, like, it's like, not like this this part time okay they go yeah. full time okay yeah time and you know it is it is such a social uh, cultural thing i think and i heard it from many of my friends not only from turkey from all uh, different countries actually this is such a big pressure for a working mom 
to go to kindergarten here, for example, and to say, actually, uh, sorry, I'm five minutes late, five minutes late, mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, in especially late afternoon, actually, this is a trauma really on, on working moms here. And I, and this is one of the things actually that I really um, talked a lot in the kindergarten with all the pedagogues and the, the, the management mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. It gave me definitely a different uh, actually mindset about the family time and what my kids need from me and so on. But still there's a reality in the life. And I think this is not so fair to put especially moms uh, in this uh, between this reality and also the other reality coming from the uh, family i think uh, people feel a little bit unsupported here but in turkey there is a mindset that or the social uh, actually um, acceptance that actually that the moms of course they are working what they can do so it gives you kind of a relief you know when you are doing your own job because you feel always guilty to take from your family time and to to give it to a professional <laughs> life so th this is a very social positioning actually mm. Mm. thank you thank you for mentioning those examples uh, so we have this mom, uh, mama baby group as well and it's always this you know if you are late and if, if it's friday uh, by two you should pick up your kid because it's friday uh, you know and not come at three o'clock or after after yeah. three is like oh my god so mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it, it's 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 really you know and then we take it a lot because as you said as moms we have we're just keeping up with responsibility we just add so once we become a mom we just we don't delegate kind of we don't don't give it and especially as you said when you move to move abroad you don't have this family support right you don't have a grand uh, you know your your parents there or you know your brother sister or whoever there to jump in so you have to create this all and i know yes. for me knowing uh, so many people here so i felt like how can i not make this work right because it yes. was you know i know so many people but i cannot find someone to take care of esma because it was our daughter so it was for me always like okay this trust you know it's different when your brother comes in and and, and you just you know that they play together or whatever they do go out and you know it's with the person that you trust however this whole thing you have to build up next to you know raising your child next to going back to work next to you know being a person right so you, you some time for yourself and recently i said i had a coffee with with a friend and i really liked what she said she has two two boys uh they are in school now so this year so from september onwards they're in school and she said they stay till four mm. in this in this like after school activity this hot and she said I don't feel a single minute or second of guilt for it because I know I've seen them. I know they enjoy there. So I know they are with friends. I know their, their activities. I know their schedule. I went through all of it with them. So what is the alternative? You know, bringing them back home and they, you know, what to do? So they, it's it's really, it's good to, it's important. We cannot change, as you know it better than I do. It's changing society it takes, you know, it takes, uh, you know, um, hundreds yeah. of years to move a few things. However, what we can do is like surround your, ourselves with really with people that say the truth as it is. You know, it's not always, you know, I'm a mom, but it's not always that I'm so like, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to be just full time mom. But I want also to be, you know, uh, follow my profession. I want to maybe start a business. I want to, you know, also have time for, for friends. I, I don't want to go on holidays alone. I want to do this, you know, and so on and so forth. So uh, so it's it's important to speak this as it is, you know, and not just get buried uh, by people's expectation. Like you're now a mom, sit at home and have 24 seven for the kids. Yes. Yeah. And also the, 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 the uh, other way around is also actually an issue. For example, it's not a question for that. Why no. actually? It can be, why not actually, you know? This is this why I always uh, say to myself and my friends, sometimes there's no modern family, I'm sorry. <laughs> This is all we are struggling really in our families as well. You know, this is this is a mindset, as you said, comes from uh, hundreds of years and years, and this this is really difficult to 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 uh, challenge actually. You know, but the, what you said is very important. Definitely, we should be brave enough to tell about what we think, even it can be wrong. It doesn't have to be always right. Actually, you know. It can be even wrong, but it is important to talk about these things. 
at the end of the day, you are one person, right? So if you yeah. if you're suffering, kind of, if or if you don't feel well, good in one, you know, a phase of your life or in one segment of your life, then you cannot be the best, you know, at work. You cannot be, you know, the best mom. So you you, you are one person at the end of the day. You can lie to yourself. You can hide. You can, you know, do the, you know different things, manipulate yourself with different energy or whatever. Have a shake or coffee and and so on. But Deep down, it has to be clear to yourself, you know, and, and I said to my husband the other day, so we cannot get it, you can, we cannot get it this perfect or, or good. It's just, you know, being a little bit better than it was yes, uh, yesterday, because for instance, our daughter is now in this age of, you know, two and a half and, you know, whatever you do, it's wrong. And, and, and you have, you know, you know how hard it is with that, you know, what, you move this thing here, it's wrong. You move it here, it's, it's the color, it's the food, it's this and that. And then you 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 know it it for me as a mom it charged emotionally very fast right because like I tried this I did this I did this I did that I did five things and nothing works you and know then, and then you're like okay ah oh, like this 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 affects me and then and with that I have to go to work right I have to go to the projects I have to go to big meetings yeah. and so on so so I'm I'm really trying to find the ways how to you know regulate this and to say like it's good enough. You know, I'm here. I'm present as much as I can, but I'm going. I'm going to do it wrong every single day. So, no, I mean, this is what you say is very important. Really, there is not this kind of a feeling actually, but we create this feeling. You know, because we have some actually ideals, some goods, and coming mostly from the society or from from our, our own our own uh, psychology or whatever it is. But this is what you said. I think I'm not an expert about it, but I think this is very important. Actually, you are a person who is managing many things and you are doing it. You know, that means you have a certain uh, know-how, wisdom about it. And as a mom as well, you are doing it very well. The most important thing for me when I was actually, and still when I'm doing it, I really don't... Uh, we try to be careful about not to do so uh, negative impact on my kids. But still, you know, uh, it is important to think about yourself and being that you are a good person and you're doing your best. Mm. And it comes with time. Of course, there are so many conflicts in many, re all relationships, there are always conflicts, but not to focus on the, the conflicts, but more focusing on the constructive <laughs> part of the relations. I think this is very important and as, as a parent it is also uh, like this being aware asking for help this is i think very important as moms because we are in a kind of a situation like that we have a lot of information really too many information too much information and it is really hard to regulate all this information mm. How we take coaching for businesses, for example, because we can't manage, we can't structure all the things. I mean, actually, I'm always calling Dilek, for example, Dilek, I am, I am confused, you know. She is always my constructing person. And like this, actually, by parenting, it is also like this. We should ask um, help, definitely. If we are confused, which is very, very normal, then it is possible to go to someone to ask for it. And it helps a lot too. And then it gave me kind of actually positioning myself in a better way, actually, because we are sometimes lost. Yeah. Uh, as you said, we take coachings and classes and educations and certified for everything we do in life. But yes. for being a mom, you just like well, it comes natural. So just do it. You know, <laughs> like, yeah, go. But for everything in life, we do extensive hours. We love it, especially in Austria. Titles, certificates, more education, more. But with mom, it's like, okay, go ahead and you can do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Austin, do you have something for moms? I know you do a lot of things at Common Room, but um, uh, mom circles or because we are t talking about. So how do you do it? So with, with uh, Common Room? Uh, I mean, actually, the Common Room is a place that is, is this an open stage. Uh, actually, I can say that's why we have uh, quite a lot of range of activities there. We are not only focused on ceramics, for example. Ceramics is our main um, activity in Common Room, but we are not focused on ceramics. We have, for example, English Dance Academy with Katie. She's an amazing uh, dance uh, teacher, very structured, very, very well organized and teaches very in, a, in her own method very nicely. Uh, 
Uh, for example, we have started with Katie uh, cooperating together because we knew each other from Vienna Family Network. Mm. Uh, it is kind of a place in Common Room that we work on projects with people. It's not only the project, but it's also the people in Common Room. And I think it, which is, which makes Common Room really that good and uh, family-wise uh, or in a community vibe or, or um, as yeah. a welcoming place actually and we started for example tiny mornings every tuesday mornings we actually open our doors for parents to come together and we have uh, music classes you are also joining yeah. music together which is amazing actually i experienced it with my kids this is this is such a nice program and uh, ma many different things for example this coming month will be kind of a month for well-being and our mm -hmm. friends actually from our community came to us and said look you made an open stage let's make an open stage for well-being i am so, perfect i really want to talk about it kind of so th this is how it works in common room if you have ideas and if you are, if you feel lonely, or if you need looking for a cooperation partner, you if you cannot take risks, but you need someone actually who can actually help you to organize and to give you the space and so on. We are trying to be really creating these kind of uh, relations and cooperations in common room. Uh, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. It has many reasons that we are really trying to look at it and to make it better, actually how we can really do it in a better way. It is always a, uh, an issue for us. But uh, this is kind of a place actually with a very uh, profession, try to be professional, but also in a very friendly and amateur um, soul actually. Um, in it so for for moms as well if there are people who are interested in doing something offering something or reaching out different communities networks this is this is a place actually thank you and thank you for correcting me with parents you know because we were talking moms and moms and dads parents exactly all the parents uh, yes. So we have uh, moms and dads in, in various classes and music together as well. Um, it's it's a great class. And I love that you did the trial, for instance, class, because then you get the experience. Because one thing is what you read on the, you know, um, what is what it is, but they, it's the different thing when you come and experience it, right? Yes. So it's, it's a totally different feeling. So thank you for that. For the ones who are listening this and are a little bit confused, there is a common room and common cafe. So yeah. just to let you know, it's the same place. So it's a one yeah. address. Uh, the Ooh. thing is that uh, when you enter it, you have a nice cafe. It's a common cafe with great food and um, delicious food and, and drinks. And then behind it, so you just walk through and then you come to the common room. And common room is a place um, where we do like this music together, ceramics, um, well-being and so on and so forth. So just to because we use it you use it someone sometimes common room sometimes common cafe so the ones yeah. who don't know it uh it's one place um with many many activities Aslam, as we are coming closer to to um fin finalizing our interview it was really really great pleasure to talk to you and i hope uh you pick up um many other podcasts and shows and go out and, and speak about what you guys do and cooperate with many people as possible uh, what is uh, because I know you know so many people so and we together we know many uh, common people so what if you would if you could tell us so what is one thing that you basically would recommend for networking so what is your tip so how do you approach it I mean don't be shy I think it's very important and never hesitate to ask this is also very important because I, I realize that if you don't tell about yourself or if you don't tell about what you want then people don't know about it and how they can how you can find the common interests you know it doesn't it's not about actually asking and taking but finding out the right people to have common interests which can empower you and make you actually really kind of uh, stronger together we always said that in common room as well actually like together stronger and we support each other very well and human Love human, human support, human, human work with humans. So we need human, and uh, this this is this is very important, I think. And sometimes I talk a lot. Actually, I know that my mom tells me about that. <laughs> but don't stop talking. Just talk it. <laughs>
<laughs> She's the best. But I've seen you many times when you were list, uh, when you were not talking. So I know both faces of Oslem. Honestly, you. yeah, I know when you, yeah, yeah, I know. So when you were making it in Austria, when we did this 10 years, you you were there and you, you, you know, you met everyone and, and you talk, spoke to everyone and then they finally get to know you because there was Oslem, but then nobody knew it who was Oslem. So it, yeah, so you, you can do both, I, I mean. Yeah. Definitely, you mean, I mean, actually you can't talk right if you don't listen right or <laughs> listen and then you can talk. <laughs> into point <laughs> <laughs> i see many books Uslan, behind you around you so and what are you reading at the moment so before we oh, close this is i mean at the moment um th there are many books actually but i have a very favorite turkish um author uh, he's called bigger karasu i really time to time um read from um him and i am reading sophie's welt in German, because I, I, I read it years, years ago, but I want to polish my German skills a little bit, and I'm reading it again. I bought it for my daughter, but she didn't like it, Then I said, okay, I'll read it, and it is... <laughs> Lead by example, so I'll, I'll master these books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but all these books are mostly from my, um, for my husband. I stopped buying books because it is too much. There's no end of it, actually, and I tell to my husband as well, please, just buy but then read it yeah. but he's kind of a flaneur by reading books you know he reads that and that and that and that yeah <laughs> like the, I know the feeling I, I think two years ago I, did, I made a, a similar decision like you I was, like, I, I was buying and buying and mine just putting them there and then reading it and basically so I stopped it and I said if I'm going to buy something also or like digital I'm going to read it otherwise I'm not going yes. you know it doesn't make any sense to be, to be a collector and other things what I did was um went back to certain books again right because you read them differently yeah. when you have five years of working experience and we, when you experience so much than five years ago when you were just starting your life yeah so it was worth, it's worth uh coming back and not just you know buying another and next one and next one yeah yeah definitely for example this book is actually one of the books that i read time to time always this is bigger cutters a turkish writer and he's he he is so and sometimes when I read his sentences, oh my gosh! If I would write like if I would write, I would like write this actually. You know, this is so good, so good. Really. <laughs> How is he writing? <laughs> you you, you know. found your so so person, yeah, so writer. Definitely, definitely, he's really such a nice guy. Oh, oh my gosh! This is. Do you see that? I don't know, but <laughs> yes, yes, we see it. So yeah. thank you, Oslem. Thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Um, thank you for joining us. Wish you all the best. Um, thank you. With all the missions that you have in place. And I look forward to see you very soon. Definitely. Thank you very much. It was so much fun to start a day, actually, really, and to seeing you as well. Yeah, you too. <laughs> thank you. <Yeah>. So <laughs> thank you, Oslem. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.